payments, or PIP. And that number is rising. It's hit the headlines over possible changes that would make it more difficult to claim. Um, Coletta, this will be really worrying for people, won't it? Before we look at what might be changing, can you just explain exactly what a, a PIP is? Is. Yes, so it's extra living costs for people with certain types of disability, both long term, either physical or mental health conditions. So it comes in two different categories, a daily living one uh, plus a mobility one. And you could potentially claim both parts uh, of this government benefit. And if you look at the amounts that you could get, uh, the daily living um, payment could be the lower rate of £72.65, but you could be on the higher rate of £108 a week. And the mobility ranges from £28 up to £75.75 .75 a week. And you can claim both of those at the same time, potentially, if you need both elements of help. In terms of the criteria, the daily living one is given to people who need help with everyday tasks. So examples of that would be, you know, preparing food, managing your medicines, washing, bathing, socialising, help to live your daily life. And then the second criteria, uh, criteria is for mobility. So if you struggle to get around, if you struggle to find or follow a route or have difficulties with physical movement, perhaps you have difficulties with public transport, then it may well be that you qualify for that as well. You can actually uh, sacrifice effectively that higher rate of mobility if you want to exchange that for a motability vehicle instead. So people often exchange that. But as I say, you can combine both of those daily living and mobility together, which obviously would put you at that, that highest rate. Mm. A huge response uh, to this from our viewers. Um, Mary's asking a question that so many people are asking. She says, uh, well, she's asking if you can get PIP for hidden disabilities. Yes, you can, is the short answer to Mary. If you have a hidden disability, like a mental health condition, it is still a disability. So you're assessed in exactly the same way. The DWP assess how the condition affects your daily life, how it impacts you, and the duration that you're likely to be impacted, because you only get these payments if you've had the condition for three months and you're likely to suffer from it for another nine months as well. So if that uh, uh, is something that applies to you, even with a hidden disability, then you're just as likely to get uh, the payments. We, we mentioned earlier that there might be some changes coming uh, along the line. Can you just explain what those are going to be? Yeah, and understandably, as you say, Michelle, it is a big concern for people hearing those headlines and wondering how it's going to impact them. Effectively, this is plans announced by the government. So this is not changes that are coming in, but this is plans for potential changes further down the line. The government say that because we have so many people, 3.3 million, just in England and Wales, claiming PIP payments at the moment, and interestingly, since COVID, we're seeing double the number of new claimants each month. They say that number is unsustainable and what they want to do is effectively uh, remove or, or make sure that we don't have so many people claiming that benefit. So they're going to try and do that in a couple of different ways. Three key changes. The first one is to the criteria, so to the uh, way people qualify um, for it. At the moment, criteria is based on how your disability or your condition affects your daily life. The new change is going to be based on a medical diagnosis. That is what they want the decision to be purely based on. The potential impact of that is that those with mental health conditions that are milder may not qualify and of course that's a real worry because that has been the big increase since COVID in the number of people it is with those milder mental health conditions but um, that's effectively what the government are trying to reduce with that one. The other thing that they're trying to change is around the eligibility so at the moment uh, the current requirement as I say is that someone has to have been suffering that condition for at least three months and have the potential of, of still suffering that in nine months time. The proposed change is a change that they haven't specified yet so the government haven't given details of how that particular criteria might change but it may well be that you have to have suffered a condition longer or have a much longer potential impact so again that will affect a lot of people currently on PIP and the final way that the government are planning change, to change the payments is around the actual amounts that you get and the way those payments are made 
So what they're looking at is rather than giving monthly cash payments, which is the system at the moment, is changing that to either a voucher scheme that you're given that's tailored to your specific needs. So it might be about particular foods because you need a certain diet or certain equipment that you could uh, get a voucher for. They may switch to a receipt based system, which is difficult for people, particularly on lower incomes, because it means that you've got to pay first and then claim it back off the government. And the final potential is a one-off grant, so that rather than getting the monthly payment, you would just be given a lump sum to make an adaption to your home, for example. There's been lots of reactions, haven't there, to the, to the, the change in plans. A viewer has been in touch saying, I'm terrified about the changes to PIP. I have mobility issues and mental health issues, and it's causing so much stress. I'd worked all my life until a car accident four years ago and cannot, cannot work. I hardly leave the house. I've had counselling on, and on medication. People are concerned about yeah, this. Yeah, and that is totally understandable. As I say, if you're hearing these headlines, to feel a good lot of panic about that because people are completely dependent on these payments at the moment. Lots of disability charities have banded together uh, and already launched a campaign about the government's plan. Scope has described the plans as a reckless assault on disabled people and the Disability Benefits Consortium say the plans are cynical and cruel. So in terms of reassuring people this morning, it is worth saying that a, this is just a consultation and when a government begins a consultation it's never a quick process so even if these plans do come in we're potentially talking year years down the line and the other thing that's worth saying is that we are within a year of an election a lot of things are being said at the moment and potentially the landscape may well change in that time period so if you're sitting at home and you're worried about changes that you're hearing about the answer is to not panic yet. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's coming down the line. We don't know which of these is going to be implemented. It's worth being aware of it, but don't worry. Don't lose sleep over it. That should be reassuring. Uh, it's called something different in Scotland, isn't it? Isn't it, it is. It is, yeah. The, the one change that definitely is coming in is that it's changed to the adult disability payment. So rather than PIP, it's now called ADP there. Effectively, it's the same criteria, though. OK. Uh, Angela's been in touch. She says, I live on my own and have various mental health and physical problems. I applied for PIP twice and got turned down is this a case of like you say don't panic and persevere perseverance is the biggie for this one keep going because a lot of people are rejected first time round so the fir your first court of uh, of of uh, first port of call, should I say, is a mandatory reconsideration. So you've got the right to ask the DWP to relook at that decision. It's worth doing that first. If you're rejected at that point, then you could take your appeal to a tribunal. And just to give a bit of hope, it's a long and draining process for people to go through that. But more than half of people who appeal their PIP decision have won at the tribunal stage. Okay. Sharon is one of them. She says regarding PIP, make sure you get help filling out the forms. Is yep. it not easy? We've got information on how to do that on the Morning Live web website actually this strap will come up now uh, she says it's taken me over a year to get my entitlement now I've got it after going to try to well, say, well yeah. done uh, that is really worth doing and great news to hear bbc.co.uk slash morning live for those details thanks at Coletta if you're in need of extra cash one way to make it is by selling old electronics